Okay, yeah, well, I just will give this short welcome with introducing the speaker. And uh, I hope, uh, I think, Maurice, I hope I spell that right. Um, you will correct me if I spell your name wrong, just introducing you a little bit. And then I have this relevance talk, which is around yeah, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just introducing race and why MATLAB and race is relevant, neural networks, and, and so on, just very briefly. And then the show is yours. Mm -hmm. Now, sorry, I'm I'm should introduce myself. Yeah. Um, I I will do this basically. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I will have just a couple of slides for it. So, mm -hmm. I think let's go starting then. <clears throat> so, Michael Bresser, now's the time to cut the video. <laughs> um, welcome everyone for race our. CUE training on creating and training neural networks with MATLAB. So it's another training in our training series on YouTube. And yeah, welcome from the two speakers today. Um, I have to say I am not the main speaker of today. That is basically, um, I hope to talk about this right, Maurice Tirot. <laughs> Sorry if I spell that a little bit wrongly, but uh, he is an expert in MATLAB from the Riga Technical University. And we will have basically also the main talk of today. I will just introduce a little bit why MATLAB is at all relevant in CUE race, where we move towards exascale, still the simple tools um, that we have around and known for many years, like MATLAB, NumPy, SkyKitLearn, are very much still on vogue in CUE race and often used. At the end, we will have a little bit of question and answer session. We have to see how far we come with this. Um, and also, if Ma, basically Maurice wants to have questions in between here and there, this is, of course, also possible. Just shortly also that this training is um, basically uh, recorded so that you know, basically, it was a GDPR consent. And I think everybody who has registered already got the link, um, basically has already agreed to that. Again, basically here, the speakers I already introduced, um, basically Maurice um, from Riga, and here's basically also the web page if you want to know more on ResearchGate. Then let me just shortly say um, this training is also organized from the National Competence Center, Icelandic HPC that we have here in Iceland, under the umbrella of the EuroCC project, and now basically the EuroCC2 project. And yeah, to not wait too long, of course, also we embrace and have a very strong connection to the NCC Germany. Obviously, um, NCC Latvia is also indirectly here involved um, with the training. And you see that we are striving towards Exascale, and that is also the relevance for the RACE project. So we see probably an Exascale facility in the Unix Supercomputing Center in Germany in 2024. And RACE is preparing for this with the AI workloads um, that I will explain a little bit in the other talk. But also, Unix is, of course, here uh, a key essential factor. Lumi a little bit as well, because it follows also the modular principle of computing with the Lumi G partition and the Lumi C and so on. And that's something what also in race was quite important to not, let's say, lose the momentum or really scaling up uh, the AI workloads. And let's go then into the point of why MATLAB is relevant in race still. So let me just switch a couple of slides here. And this is really for all of you that don't know race yet. So I will do a little bit in race introduction and then put MATLAB always a little bit in between um, basically where it's relevant, um, why it's basically used, although it's a tool which has been used for neural networks since a long time, actually. Um, and we will go a little bit just into the race project before. Obviously, if you want to learn a lot of race, um, you know, information and what we're doing in terms of new social media links, um, there's a race website, which is always a very good starter, but we also quite in often in LinkedIn and in the social networks active. So please feel free to also join there if you want, especially also our YouTube channel, obviously, with this YouTube training. So what we a little bit do in race is kind of captures in this, um, where we have definitely lots of experiments, simulations that create a lot of data. And then one of the ideas is to really combine this, of course, with eight, eight technologies that really are able to scale towards exascale, as I was alluding to earlier. 
Obviously, we don't have really an extra scale facility in Europe right now. The first one will be Jupiter in Jülich, but that's something where we prepare the modeling for. And one vision in some of the experiments we do is also to do then the training of surrogate models, of neural networks, of others that maybe can then also basically be this full loop that you see here with the simulation, the experiments, and hopefully with surrogate models also save some computing while not losing, of course, um, here and there the accuracy of the overall experiment. So basically there are different pieces and in order to kind of design a framework that has this AI power for extra scale, all the components we need, we follow something called the application co-design process that you see here with different um, compute intensive use cases in different areas of physics, very much driven here by CFD codes, but also by a couple of other codes. And then we have data-driven use cases at the second part of code design that really are basically more focusing on the big data parts. We have CERN involved, but also remote sensing, seismic imaging, and salt engineering, so different data-oriented use cases. And all of that is basically on the website. But you can imagine all of these use cases are creating data or work with data, and this kind of ideas that you see here represent the modeling and some of the modeling will be neural networks and to explore before you really scale up to a JAXA scale, MATLAB can be incredibly useful to do rapid prototyping to understand with neural networks, um, how you deal with data sets before you really do the very much scale out maybe with some of the larger components we have as Horrorbot distributed training and so on. Still, it's also capable of using HPC with the parallel toolbox and so on. I think we will hear a little bit about this as well. So instead of thinking we need always just TensorFlow and PyTorch, it's also important to realize that there's Scikit-Learn, there's basically NumPy, there's uh, MATLAB um, around, and some people I have even seen doing Maple, right? So it's also mathematical software, which was used uh, 20 years ago. So in, in this sense, um, it's important to realize that AI communities um, then I'm not used to HPC, often start with those tools, understanding the modeling, and then basically do the big step maybe to go towards, you know, larger HPC systems. And there in Harais, we can obviously help. And we have another of other, let's say, elements where we in, in basically here in the RACE project help. Um, obviously, we check the scaling of machine learning and deep learning codes when you maybe want to migrate from MATLAB codes, maybe to PyTorch or Horowood with um, other tools like DeepSpeed or Horrorbot, maybe with TensorFlow. And of course, we have different AI modeling um, already experience in the project and benchmarking a lot of HPC machines and concrete, let's say, pre-trained algorithms or models. Um, one of the key selling arguments of RAISE these days is also hyperparameter tuning. So we not only speed up the models, with going to more and more using of GPUs, Obviously, on a HPC machine, we also can better the models through hyperparameter tuning, taking these kind of in a parallel way, the optimization processes, and with this often have a better model afterwards, which is quite also, of course, one, one goal of AI modeling. What we basically offer then as CUE is something we call this unique AI framework towards exascale, right? But obviously, it works already for petascale and, and so pre exascale systems. We you see some ingredients here. We had co-design elements basically on the hardware infrastructure that we have today, but also software infrastructure, all the different tools that are around, we analyzed, we looked at. And then of course the use cases that I was alluding to earlier, this all was taken into account to basically create this unique AI framework that I will basically talk a little bit about in the next couple of slides and how we created it. So that's something which will be soon also be available on the RACE website. Um, we created this since basically the beginning of the project with fact sheets, understanding all the use cases, understanding the constraints and limits of hardware, and then perform co-design really in this interaction rules with all the different use cases in order to really carve out, you know, what is it what you need from this framework? What are the components which are interest? And then of course the benchmarking activities have started looking and is are these components really ready up to scale and where are the limits? Large batch size problems or many things which are like more AI modeling um, challenges have been also revealed where we can also help. And many of these elements that I just discussed, hyperparameter optimization, um, the problem of large batch sizes and basically distributed training, all of this is available in the YouTube channel. That's why here a little bit of marketing again, please 
go ahead, um, go to YouTube, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, that's incredibly important for us, also for the review of the commission, so that they basically see really people using this material out there. And the modeling, what we will see today from Maurice, We'll be focusing on neural networks, which is a big topic in RAIS. You can see in one way or another in this table, which is our different use cases here and different, let's say, modeling techniques here. Artificial neural networks like those here, you have like typical, let's say, um, two, two hidden layer feed forward network. Things like this are used, but also convolutional neural networks, more modern artificial neural networks and even recurrent neural networks. Um, like here with gated recurrent unit or long short term memory. But I don't have here the time to go on all the details, but it just puts in the point why MATLAB and neural network modeling with it is still relevant, right? To explore, especially in the beginning, is this something which is a model uh, for this particular data at hand? And then basically thinking about how we can scale up. I would use part of the framework. In the moment, this is a kind of most recent version that we have right now. There will be soon a document that is available, a deliverable, which is basically submitted and, as far as I'm aware, also public. So we basically can put that on our web page where all of these different components are described. And obviously, I, this training here would be filling all the time for it. So I don't want to discuss this very much. There will be an upcoming training of this updated software framework in some point in time. But you see here MATLAB very well represented along the lines in the basic science and AI libraries. Right. So next to really the other ones that we have in the framework with TensorFlow, PyTorch and so forth, where we really have experience of scaling this up and where we target to really offer these um, framework elements also on the EuroHPC hosting side. So this is, of course, obviously still a plan. We're working on this, including the Jupyter Exascale system in 2024, hopefully. But many of the parts have been already tested and are adopted right now in let's say other European HPC systems we see around here, or the prototype HPC systems we have lots of experience with, or basically modular HPC systems like in Jubils, also quite a lot of GPUs and you know, technology there. Needless to say, some emerging technology is relevant for us as well, like the D-Wave quantum annealing that you see here. So basically there, we have also some traditional models from support vector machines we really support, and it's a code available to the community as well. But I think it's important to realize where MATLAB is standing in the overall framework part, in this basic science and libraries part, where then, of course, uh, Maurice will talk much more now about MATLAB, what it is, how we can use it for neural networks. So the adoption is work in progress. I was already alluding to this, so I think I can skip that a little bit to give Maurice a little bit more time. And I think my 20 minutes are up, and I would welcome Maurice to basically share your screen. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Then probably I can uh, continue your talk. Uh, so uh, I will share my screen probably. Talk, yes, talk, so. so I have to put my presentation here. OK, so um, hello. Uh, I'm Maris Terrells, and today's topic is creating and uh, uh, training neural networks uh, uh, with the MATLAB. And uh, oh, sorry, it's, uh, something wrong, yeah, with audio, yeah. I think at least I can hear you, and I can see the slides as well. Uh -huh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now it's better. Yeah, indeed, now it's better. It's better? Yeah. Okay, so uh, the topic is creating and training neural network uh, with MATLAB. Yeah, and um, and let's uh, no, let's start to uh, look what we can do with the MATLAB. No, actually, this is uh, so okay, uh, very introductive. Uh, seminar about that yeah uh here i maybe i i can i want to show one um uh, image from uh, matlab help uh, system and here you see uh that you can um, use 
not only the neural network that is uh, preparing MATLAB, but also we can use also Tensor, Flow, uh, and other uh, Python's and other uh, another open format uh, neural networks. But let's uh, let's start with MATLAB. So I will open a MATLAB. Uh, and uh, today uh, we are going to. Um, uh, to talk about um, convolutional neural network uh, that is related with image. Um, I suppose that is a uh, the, this is a good uh, starting network because it's uh, uh, very obvious. You can see images and then we can try to understand it very well. Uh, so, uh, and uh, let's start. Uh, we will work uh, on uh, local machines as well as um, uh, we will also go in um, AP um, high performance uh, computer to send some some tasks to, to it. Yeah, but let's start. And uh, uh, the the very first uh, step. Uh, no, let's try to take some neural network uh, and i i will take uh, uh something like uh like um alex net so uh, we will type net is equal to alex net uh, net will be a variable or handle to store this alex net and computer to deal with it and Alex net will be some neural network um, to deal with some images to classify it and for a first if you will do that for a first time maybe you uh, will be asked to install this Alex net first of all uh, we can uh, just ju just a look on this network okay we can try to plot or uh, there's other other comments probably so to, let's try так а ah, ну no. no, here is uh, one way how to see that network also another comment is analyze and net analyze network mm -hmm. так, analyze network uh, it's more Uh, it's uh, it's more convenient. You see the neural network internal structure, but maybe first uh, first step. Let's try to look what we can do with that network. Uh, and to do that, I will take uh, some image and. Uh, so I will take uh, for first I will take my own images yeah um, and then try to ask this network to classify this image and um, so I will um, I will change uh, probably the directory to some uh, to some other directory and I will uh, I will open uh, some images. So, and um, I will take uh, the. Uh, I will take. No, um, I prepared here uh, some some test images uh, very simple yeah and maybe i will ask uh, to neural network cl to classify this image so uh, first of all uh, here is uh, here you see gpg image I, I and i want to classify this image uh, first of all you have to read this image into matlab uh, this comes with imread command so reading image into MATLAB. So 
imread img gpg it's a sum of image yeah and Uh, maybe I can uh, show this image on a screen. We can do it with that command, or also we can use im show command as well. This is the two co uh, two commands to show this image. Yeah, and no, and that the the, fir the the first example to ask this AlexNet to classify this image. So uh, net. Um, this is net is uh, the name of this Alex net and classify uh, image we will ask uh, and then we get some answer uh, from neural network actually this neural uh, this neural network that I used is already trained for some kind of images, there is a thousand of images, um, a thousand of classes, and um, actually, maybe uh, I can show um, a little bit this network. So net is, uh, and here you see, you see some layers. We can look, for example, net layers. We will see that that network contains twenty five layers. Um, so maybe I will switch also the common history here. Yeah, here will be the previous comments also. So that uh, net layers will show some layers, and here is no maybe. Uh, we are interesting in the first in the very first layer uh, then i will ask net layers and put one here in the brackets and i get the structure of first layers and i the uh, the very important is input size we see uh, that we have to feed the Im images that is uh, two uh, 227 uh, per 227 uh, uh, pixels. And uh, then also interesting is the last uh, layer. That is the output layer. And here we have a class of a neural network. So we can look on classes. And here, if you look, we will see, yeah, here is a comment that I typed here, yeah, if you didn't. Uh, um, so here is a thousand of classes. Uh, for a, uh, for which uh, this uh, neural network is trained. Yeah, we can use here own classes and today we are going to use some other classes also as well not just that classes yeah but uh, this is that, that we get yeah also uh, very interesting um, thing that we can look in some other layers no let's try let's try to look for example for second layer is a convolution layer and here under learner uh, learnable parameter we have uh, some parameters uh, uh, that is um, no actually uh, no before this uh, neural network was trained on some images and then uh, they adjust his weight and bias to do that uh task very very good and here we see that here are some matrices with that weight and bias and we can no we can also <laughs> look on them but uh, it's really very big but it's just for second layer it's not just all uh, uh this uh, this um um this network has 25 layers and not not all of layers but 
a lot has such parameters and we can look, but really this matrices is very huge and then will be just a huge amount of numbers uh, with whites, yeah. Yeah, here is four-dimensional matrix. It's really, really, really big, yeah. Uh, uh, let's try again. Uh, oh, it's so it's it's not our, uh, here's number of uh, number of rows, number of columns, and as uh, third dimension and it is four dimension. It's really <laughs> not 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 we cannot understand what is in, in, this in, in in that matrix. But here the same. Is an, in another layers, for example, layer three, not just as is here as no some learnables, for example, here is also nothing. Uh, layer five also without anything, but for example, layer six has also some learnables parameters. Okay. Um, um, so, uh, but as I have here some many images, then I maybe I can try to fit it all to my network. Um, so, how to classify any images? Uh, so, uh, first of all, I, no, here is two options. One option is directly read these images into MATLAB. This is the first option, but uh, usually we have a thousand of uh, also many, many images and then thousands of images. And then these options maybe it's not, not so, not so interesting but as here is just eight images i can uh, try to read that then all into matlab so uh, my images is the um, has the names emg1 emg2 till emg8 so i will create some loop um and here I will create uh, some matrix to store all my my images. Um, number of rows, number of columns. Uh, each image has three col uh, three uh, color layers. Then here is uh, this. Uh, no, it means. The each colorful um, each um, colorful image has three layers. Here is uh, all uh, these colors, and then will be four layers that it has like a number of image, and I uh, will use imread um, imread command uh, to to read this image and. Here in the brackets, I will process process uh, um, the name. For example, like that. And okay, and then what I get, I get. uh image uh, matrix uh here is a number of rows number of columns itself here uh, is number of layers uh, in rgb coding is three layers and here is a number of images and all of them is this num numerical array yeah and then i can cl uh, ask to cl classify this image no, actually, uh, ask to classify this array of image. Uh, so, no, to be honest, uh, not all cl classification, uh, not all 
classification is uh, uh, ideal. Yes, and uh, you can see no something. Okay, this car is like a beach wagon. No, okay, okay, this is fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, yeah, but if I look, this is uh, like a uh, some dog. It looks very like 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 this shift. Yeah, dam. No, it is it's a dam. Yeah, no. It looks like triumphal arc also, um, and no, um, this uh, this one no, it's not looks like uh, no like it says here is some misunderstanding yeah and then warm but no it's not warm but but it's all also very very similar to it yeah uh, this okay, but. Uh, uh, the better way how to read if you have a lot of images the better way is um, image data store so i will create uh, some data store image data store so and here i will provide um, the path to my images Actually, I can copy it from maybe from here. Here is a path to images. And after uh, after we created this image uh, data store, we get files, folders, uh, no, here just one folder. In in that example, it's just one folder. In some other examples, you will see some several folders uh, related uh, with different classes. And here we see some some files. And then I can also ask uh, ah, what we, what we can do actually. Im, Img ds is a data store, and if I want, I can read the image from data store for example um and i will save with like a im one probably i will terminate this with a semicomma because here will be a lot of uh, a lot of information and with a image command i can show this on a screen when i invoke uh this uh, read command again for example there will be the reading of next image etc et uh, also we can use read image command read image command and provide uh, uh, some index for no i i provided the third image this one yeah uh the index for uh for the image that we want to read um and um also some other related comment here how to see no all or part uh, of images that is in data store we can use montage command montage and i will feed this name of data store no here is not a lot of images so we get uh, all the images here if here will be more images that I can specify how how um, how many images I want to see here. For example, I want to see here four images two by two, so it comes like that one. Okay. Uh, then. 
Um, uh, actually, these images in that data store was uh, prepared uh, to to feed uh, to feed to neural network first layer. Um, let me show again. Let net um, um, tak. net layers. Uh, let me show again the the first layer of uh, neural network. And here you see the input size should be um, two hundred twenty seven uh, per two hundred twenty seven, and each image in that data store also was so big. But usually. We have mismatch, uh, mismatching of these images, uh, and then I will take uh, another uh, prepared images. Uh, for example, that images that is that has different size. So I will change uh, my directory, probably. So, and I will read. Uh, Second example, uh, if image size does not uh, does not fit to neural network input. So then um, we can use no actually then we can also use this data store img no data store 2 for example uh, image data store so let me copy так let me copy this past two images here okay so I read these images, yeah, and if I if I want to classify that images, I will get an error because um, no, it it will some some no, actually the new uh, this newer version of MATLAB tell you uh, something uh, very. Uh, no, sometimes it tells you mo most of times they tell uh, very precise what you should do actually here the uh, incorrect input size and uh, the Im images must have a size of something like that yeah and then what we can do we can resize the images uh, to resize uh, to resize one image, for example, to resize one image, um, no, for example, I will read one of one image from this data store. In resize, in one, and here I can put. Um, dimensions uh, so in res and I will save it in in res variable so then this image will be resize resized image let me show what happens in res so we see no here is 200 um, 27 per 227 yes and um, but uh, as here we have more than one image, we want to resize them all. Then we can also use this data store approach. Uh, but uh, how to resize a whole data store? So I will create another data store. Um, 
and the name is uh, augmented image data store. And I will feed uh, the sizes of image and I will feed uh, data store name, previous data store name. So, um, tab so, let's try to do that. And um, actually, all images uh, will be uh, will be resized. Yes, but um, actually, when you use this data store, uh, no images will be stored on your computer in in your op uh, um, in your memory of computer. Because if you read of thousand images uh, as once, it will the memory will be full, and we really we cannot. We cannot read. Yeah, you can try to classify. Here, the here is the two arguments for classifying. Here, first is uh, this uh, neural network name. Sorry, and uh, the second is this um, image image array. Yeah, yeah just uh, this one. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah. So let's try to classify. It will take some a little bit time, a little time, and maybe we can look um, ah, no montage does not uh, okay, I can mount uh, I can use this uh, no montage, but I can use this one. Just only this data store is valid for montage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. So here is my images, and here is uh, this classifying uh, classifying of images. You can see the Labrador. No, actually, here is a wing. Yeah. Uh, no. It's not spice shuttle, but <laughs> maybe it looks like uh, here everything is fine. It is a rabbit. Yes. Uh, no, actually, it's a <laughs> some sometimes mismatching happens. It's not a cocker spaniel, the same Labrador. Yeah, and this is a oscilloscope. No, it does not. Um, uh, does it have a voltmeter? But it looks like radio, maybe, yeah. And this also looks like oscilloscope. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, and uh, and we will use this augmented uh, image data store uh, to prepare these images for uh, neural network. But let's. Ta let's take another uh, another data store and here in that data store we have also black and white images black and white images so let's read them image data store Um, so here I will provide the path running set test three. Yes, um, and Here I will provide also a resizing option. In GDS. Then I will also provide 
uh, if I have some mismatching with color and black and white images, I have to use such option like a color uh, preprocessing, and I can convert all images to RGB, not like a to color format or all images to black and white format. No, now maybe I will convert to RGB, uh, like a to color format, gray to RGB. Also, it's possible like RGB to gray, yeah. Um, so, like that one, and actually we can also try to classify now. Classify, tag, net, and images. also will take some time no here is the image here like where here is the images for example yeah uh, uh. no okay uh yeah here maybe the order is unclear order of images is unclear yeah sometimes the order is different yeah that, that is really a really different order of images and i can will with a less command look for right order but maybe it's not so important maybe that is the right order uh, of images that maybe we don't do that now uh okay i suppose now we will train some network yeah and uh, then we will also train some network by using uh, GPU. And if we will have some time, that maybe we will go back to this experiment and look why a network uh, uh, have some mismatching uh, with guessing what that is, or uh, uh, if sometimes uh, some time will be left. So, uh, so. Uh, uh, let, let's try to let, let's try to uh, train some neural network. So, uh, okay, um, I will use I will use some example from MATLAB. Here, we will create some image data store, and um, from MATLAB, this is. Uh, really uh, in in uh, some neural network demos then uh, no here um, here is a way uh, another way uh, no how to show many images no we can run this part of uh, this code like a montage and uh, but just another way actually we see 20 images from this data store here you see it is an uh, there is a numbers there is a numbers and uh, actually it's uh, very uh, very small let's look it's very small how much it's Let's try read uh, read from EMDS, for example. Yeah, it's uh, 28 per 28 pixels. It's very small. Then I can run this example on my laptop. Yeah, another example. Uh, in another example, I will use a larger images and really i cannot run uh, we will just look how it's uh, will work on um, APC, apc because it's not able to run but this with small images we can run also on normal computers yeah uh, no maybe but, uh, when we get the images uh, we try to uh, we get each number uh, in each subfolder actually 
or once we have in one subfolder that uh, has a name one or two we have in another subfolder that has a name two etc and then uh, here we get something like a label source like a folder name we get the labels uh, what the class is from folder names next we will create a neural network here uh, you can see you can see a layers uh, a layers uh, uh, each layer is um, created with some command yeah and this is the layers of neural network and then we can we can try to train the network but first of all to train it we have to define some options and here i have to provide that we will use stochastic gradient descent with momentum optimizer and i can also uh, provide other options no actually we can type this into matlab without the semicomma just a type and then we will get a plenty of options a plenty of options um and maybe i will leave mostly of options as default uh but maybe i will show um no just some some important options one of option is maximum ep maximum epoch it is a number of epoch how um how long uh, your neural network will be trained and here i will provide something like a 10 no because i will show this uh, example on my computer then i will provide some smaller number of epoch each epoch during each epoch this uh, sequence of images will go through this um, neural network uh, then another um, important options is mini batch size mini batch size sometimes if you have um, out of memory it can be yeah like a it's a number of, actually it's a number of images that will be read at once in a, in a neural network to compute uh, to calculate this uh, coefficient and really if this number is too big sometimes we will have a lack of operational um memory and if you have like out of memory that we can decrease this number uh, but um really very important uh, uh this is something like a some option uh just for uh sorry here is also options options yeah uh but uh really for um for neural network uh is two important options one is momentum so here is a minimum so this stochastic gradient the standard optimization we for example we go towards the minimum for example this is our first step then this will be our second step but momentum uh, regulates this second step because uh, if we put momentum equal to zero it will go here but if you will put momentum equal to one it will go at the same direction what in a previous step and some number between zero and one will put this next step 
between um, these two steps. I can put this zero nine if, but we can variate it if if uh, if we can we can variate it to get another solutions better probably or worse. And also initial uh, tag, initial learn rate can be such uh, or uh, we can decrease it maybe later. Um, okay, well, maybe let's try to run it. Let's try to run it. Try and command is a try network. Uh, here I will provide what? I will provide images. Tag. Where is my image? Uh, tag. I will provide images. Here is the image. Uh, image uh, data store. Yes, but I can split that images to have some images to train that network and to have some images to test that network. And the splitting of images will have this uh, split each label. Here is an image data store. And here, how much images uh, will stay uh, will stay it as a train images and rest will be uh, will be test images if i provide integer this will be number of images for training in each class if i will provide some no, example for example 0 0.5 or 0 0.8 it will divide my uh, images proportionally like a 80 percent for training and 20 percent for testing but let's put here uh, uh, that number that was before um, 750 okay uh, then we divide these images these images we will we will use for training and this image just we will uh, use for testing after we will train some network so so tra uh, train network uh, here I will feed in train, yes, and I will feed also layers and options. Uh, that is that options. So, okay, let's run to run it. So I will save it. Uh, так. I will save it like it doesn't matter my network.m my network.m and I will run uh, during running um, uh, we will see no, actually here is training on single CPU and during running Oh, okay. Ah, sometimes we get something not, not a number. For uh, that reason, we can decrease uh, decrease uh, this initial learning rate. Okay, I will try again. So. What we get here, um, here is a crazy. This have to go to have seems like a two hundred uh, percent. Yeah, <laughs> it looks not so um, not so well now. Oh, it's really okay. It's really so. Okay, I will provide this number. So we get four. Should be very, very small. Okay. Um, so let's look again.
yes, this will go toward 100 probably, yeah, and this will go toward zero, like, a, and here is a base learning rate, yeah, and if you have here 100 and here, no, actually here won't be zero, here will be a very, very small, small size, you will see uh, that, that we can um, uh, imagine that this network is trained, yeah, but no, maybe, uh, but then I, I, I will provide this um, number of, uh, actually, I have to increase the number of epoch to reach m m my goals, yeah, now I, we will, we won't um, wait so much, yeah, uh, here will be, a, no, maybe we, we have to really to increase, yeah, it's not so, we didn't here should be some smaller number that maybe we will increase to uh, 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 20 but it's uh, okay here we get something like um like a printing of results we can also get some graph so here we have uh, we have known plots but we can provide these plots by typing options, plots, and training progress. Let me show what happens then. Then during running, we can see uh, some progress of learning the accuracy that this goes to 100% and loss that will go to zero. So this is a completed graph, yeah. Okay. So we can also put options verbose to false uh, to eliminate printing of information in uh, the command window. Then in that option, we will have only the progressing graph without printing result. Actually, here we can also uh learn rate drop uh, period we can uh, and uh, learn um, rate drop factor we can um, choose the three these three options to change um to change uh, 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 this ba base learning rate to decrease this uh, for example after 10 epoch we can decrease it no then for example we will provide this learn rate schedule as this wise. Then we will provide uh, learn rate drop factor as, uh, for example, 0 0.1, and then we will provide also optional learn rate drop period. So, for example, I will put this one to four, and let's, and maybe I will switch off this plot to see what happens on uh, on that one so let's run again my network run and then and you can see that after for epoch, it is 10 times smaller. 
like we provided here with drop factor yeah uh, also uh, we can use uh, some validation uh, actually validation data uh, validation frequency to validate um, for validation uh, actually during learning we can use another set of images that is unknown for a network to see uh, that the network will how this network will will deal with that result let's provide some example for validation um okay usually in machine learning um uh, some such proportion is used 70 percent for training 20 percent for validation and 10 percent for testing so then here i will create one more variable new um, uh, new uh, validation files and maybe i will provide now um this percentage like a 70 percent will be for training uh 20 percent will be for validation and 10 percent will be for test then here i will also provide validation e mds validation switch it it number yes and here should be two variables new of training file and new of validation file so and then maybe let me put three dots and continue here uh three options validation data is equal to that in this validation so let's run and look look what happens so validation data is some data some new data for a neural network on, on each uh, after each learning process we show some validation data for a network and then you see this black one is this validation data and uh, some no you see the percentage this is a little bit lower but this blue one is showing the same data on each the network was trained and this black one is showing a new data and it's no it's normally lower if the network will get over train it then this black one this validation will get worse because it will react only on um, trained images not on the new one on the next example on next two examples i want to take uh, alex ne um alex next um network and i want uh, to retrain it to my own classes uh, for this task i will use uh, this uh, this data set actually here is a link to this data set i will send this in the chat also um but uh because here is 
larger images, uh, 256 per 226 pixels. And uh, then this will be the challenge for APC computer, not just for my computer with which I can run everything and look, oh, everything works. No, like I, uh, then I will take some real, realistic um, images. Uh, actually here, uh, but actually here is five classes, but in uh, AlexNet, as I say, there was a thousand classes. So what to do in a MATLAB, uh, we can use Deep Network Designer. Deep Network Designer is a some kind of uh, tool that helps you to work, uh, to deal with uh, the networks. So Deep Network Designer. Okay, it is here. Here, Deep Network Designer start page. And I can use a blank network or I can use the same AlexNet. Here is a, a sequence network. Here, if you scroll, uh, if you look on pre-trained network, uh, if I show more, I will see probably this AlexNet. And I can open it directly or I can import this from workspace. I can click here or uh, maybe I can just uh, to import this from workspace. Maybe I will uh, I will import it. Так, deep network designer. So what happens here? So I will choose this AlexNet. Okay. And I imported it here. Okay. I can zoom in a little bit and get all layers. And the thing that I have to do to change that network, um, I will change this fully connected layer. We can click here. Um, and you will see that it uh, has 1,000 outputs. This 1,000 outputs is related with 1,000 classes at outputs. Then I will change it um, with another fully connected layer. And we have to have so many classes that we have in that data set. Here is a five classes, only five classes, but that output, output size is five. And um, yeah, then I put five here and I del I will delete this one. I will delete this one and I will connect, click here and connect here and click here and connect it here. And I will also provide classification output. So like that one. And now I can X, uh, actually, I can also train this network here in that tool. Here is a data tab. I can import some data and I can click on training and train it, uh, choose some training options, but I will do that one on a, on a APC computer. So I will um, click export and it save me that exporting layer one to the workspace. Uh, layer layer one to the works tag La layers one here is a layers one and uh, i can show what we get um we get uh, this fully connected layer that i replace it you see that white and bias is empty uh, but for example if you look on that layer previous fully connected layer for example 20 you will see that here is some learnable parameter so i i i take i uh i took uh this pre-trained network that has some 
train it coefficient and I change something. And now I will also retrain it, but this retraining uh, won't uh, take so much time. Uh, so, okay, I exported it here. Then I can, um, ah, okay. That program to train it, um, I will show that program. Just a second. Um, program will be here. We will we will actually um, I will save. I exported the layers. It they is here in my workspace, and I will save it. Save it as a Alex Net with whites. Yeah, modify it. Four five classes. And I will uh, save just only this layers one variable. Layers one variable. Here is a way how I can save something here in MATLAB. You know, it will save, yeah. And um, here is a directory. Actually, I get this training set also on a server. Uh, here is a path to train training set and here I will use also some validation set here is some another option uh, this option will rotate and will uh, shift uh, some images to make it a little bit different time by time and then I will use some initial initial level rate. Uh, no, this mini batch size won't be so much. Here will be one eight eight. Here maybe I do not change this. Here will be known, uh, and I can use different execution environment. I can uh, use multiple GPU. It's one option if you have. Uh, many GPU attached to um, your computer. We can use GPU if you have only one, for example, graphical card. We can use CPU if you have no uh, GPU. Uh, we can use a parallel. Um, the parallel option will use um, parallel pool. Uh, that means that it can use many uh, many cores of your CPU, or if you have GPU, it can use GPU, or if you, um, yeah, that is, uh, as I understand, no control, but we will use a GPU, CPU, many cores, uh, CPU. Here is some some thing, uh, just a parallel, just a parallel pool, and what is available? Okay, here will be GPU just for one GPU. Okay, and then I will save some results. Okay, uh, we do not use this uh, learn drop factor. This is what well, not not use mini. Okay, mini batch size will be one hundred twenty-eight. Um, Tak, learn right schedule is also not used. Uh, execution environment is GPU. We will run on one GPU and we will look on um, plot that will show us training process. And then we will going to train network here. Here is the train network. We will feed this image. 
uh, images data store uh, layers layers comes from uh, from this alexnet from this loading and options is was here and no it's just just for saving after one so i will send it to the server i will use a far to do that yes uh find unique example two the name is so example two and here i will open i will open the server yes and i will well unique example copy them to the server copy okay it will be replaced yeah and then i can open everything on a server i will open putty here i have some say some data so here we are so i will ask for some specific node node 44 that has one gpu and memory i hope it's um okay it's fine then i will load a matlab on that node module load yes and i will run a matlab and I will also try to run um I one well, I sorry I, I haven't run this graphics graphics here again then maybe I have to run MATLAB again MATLAB again okay it's running now everything is fine and i also want to run some script that will illustrate me how uh, we how we use this one maybe no yeah it's this one the uh, gpu usage but it's just gpu usage by us we will set the right directory seminar and I will open, open, just to be sure that everything is fine. This one, but unique example, yes, yeah, uh, actually, it's one mistake because here is options, option, it's also options, not options, but op the shorter version of that one like that one mm -hmm. yeah let's run again let's run again and i hope everything will be fine straining graph yes and then we can see it, yes. We can see how fast it comes. And I see that we forget to put some validation sequence that maybe here I also I forgot to add some validation data. So then my data does not have any validation line so i will uh, do it again i will add some also option valid option validation data yeah uh, so i will send this again just a second 
So, I rerun everything. Uh, with validation now. So, here we are. No, here, the validation. Uh, you can also change the validation frequency. Um, it's running. And we can see also how the server utilize GPU. Here is something like a 32%. Yeah, 32% they used, yeah. And so it comes down. Also, it comes up 32%. Maybe not very, per 100%, yeah, but it's also cam came very very fast this it will be completed soon actually on gpu it will take no about 6 minutes 6 minutes to run um here this black line is a validation set it's like a showing some unknown images to um, uh, to to this neural network, and you see it's something like a ninety-two. It's uh, it looks fine, uh, I, I suppose. Yeah, and loss also, it's here. Um, it's uh, but no, and I provide like a just uh, thirty epoch. Maybe I have to provide more. Yeah, but. Um, and I also I, I also uh, try to compare this running time, this running time um, with, uh, for example, with my laptop computer that has no GPUs, it just run on a single CPU. It takes um, 150 minutes. Uh, if you if you use this GPU, just like a um uh, gpu on this cluster it takes just a seven minutes um i tried also to use two gpus no maybe maybe i i i i, I have to deal something with um i have to deal with uh, some settings it will uh take uh no shorter time but uh, maybe I, I i i have to provide uh, larger batches uh, than i provide twice larger batches got to seven minutes not 9.5 but um but i also tried without gpu and uh just on on uh, four cores it's also come came very long then but actually this is very short no it's no it's very short example how we train yeah this because everything is pre-trained okay now let's do the next experiment and the next experiment is such um um so the next experiment is such talk, um that we can take the same network but we can take it without any training information i can just help alex net yeah and uh and 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 and, and here is i can get uh the only structure of alex net the same layers but without without any information you can look now into layers for example layers it was a no which was second yeah and all learnable parameters will be empty in all layers and i can try just to run this one also on a server then i can try uh, and i can compare this running time so uh, what I did, I also open this neural network designer. Uh, now, now I load layers uh, with that command. Then I open it. Deep network designer. They open it. No, actually, I open it the new one. New. Uh, I take from workspace um, uh, these layers.
So the name is layers, layers. Okay. Replace. I get the same network, yeah, but now it's no no coefficient at all. Um, then I zoom in, go to the last layers, the last fully connected layer. Also, I change it. I also change it to... So the new layers and here I provided um, five uh, output size equal to five and I when I do it I exported it you can also try to run uh, also here but <laughs> if uh, really if you have to uh, run everything on uh, on uh, other servers and uh, maybe so to the, the usage of graphical tool is not so convenient that maybe the better is to use this uh, code tool. Actually, also during uh, during an export, you can also try to, for example, try to generate code or try, uh, for example, try to generate code. And then like uh, during uh, generating a code, you can to get uh, the list of commands uh, that created this um, uh, this um, um, this network. Uh, no, just a second. Tak. No, actually, here is the layers, and then we get everything uh, as a script here as a generation of layers with, with the commands. I will close it. Yeah. So now I I. I import and, and I export that, but sorry, I, I didn't notice layers, layers three, layer three, layers three. Okay, it's my layers. I also will save it. Save um, Alex uh, net without learnables, and I will save uh, dot mat. This is a, uh, that file and uh the actual uh tag train example this one train example um actually is the same yeah is the same no yeah here is here should be that alexnet without learnables this uh, that name and here should be layers is equal to layer three for example yes and um i will uh no i increased the epoch um epoch number from 30 to 200 and i want to also to train a network um no i can and i also will go to that uh, to that server no shuffle means that we will mix uh, images for each epoch I will comment it and do not use this for first run and also here is another option of image augmenter I will talk ab about it also a little bit later and I also do not use it for a first run I will it do not use it now then I will copy first of all I will copy this network and then train example then so I ran it so we see everything is started here is the training iterations yes it comes up but uh, actually it will take a lot of time 
Second, uh, training from scratch. So five classes without, uh, actually without anything, without anything we get. Uh, no, not very good results. Actually, we train it is uh, that network. We get the minimum losses, but with validation set, when we show some new images to network, the successful percent was something about 70. And it's really, it's see, it's it takes a, no, maybe it's not, it takes a lot of time. Maybe I can stop here on that epoch. Uh, but for example, to run these 200 epochs, I, 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 I spent um, half an hour, half an hour on GPU. Uh, no, you can extrapolate uh, from previous slide, you can extrapolate half an hour, uh, means it will you no know, four times bigger, like that one. Yeah. Um, but uh, then, as the result wasn't so good, I add some other parameter. This parameter um, shuffle is to mix um, uh, to mix order of images, epoch by epoch, uh, and also I use the image. Uh, um, I use. Some image argument uh, uh, augmenter. Uh, what it did? Uh, no, let me try to show. Uh, if that is your original image, it will rotate it uh, randomly, or it will be flip uh, per x-axis, or uh, it will also shift it, and everything comes. Um, where is the code from this piece of code yeah like a image augmenter here is uh, like a, a run x reflection true run x translation and also no ah here is no rotation ah, i didn't rotate it okay maybe with rotation it will be better also uh and by adding this one and by changing these images uh, epoch by epoch i rerun uh, I rerun this result. If if here without, uh, here was something below of seventeen percent. Uh, no, I suppose here a seventy five is difficult to see, but here is a better, better, but maybe also validation accuracy seventy four percent percent. That is the way how you can improve uh, your result, but really, it's also. It's also it's also not ideal, but maybe. Uh, but really, uh, by by using this one before, with pre, by using pre-trained result, like a, I use a pre-trained result here, and with pre-trained result, this result was very 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 good. Yeah. Um, no. Okay. We have some time. If you have some time, I can also show you maybe uh, some con confusion chart. No, maybe. Uh, here is a file for an example two about transfer learning and I uh, before I ran it on a server and actually after running uh, I want to get some results then here at the end of file I save this results in file file during example two, and also I save it. Uh, I, I actually I ran it many times, and I also save it like a fine tuning example twenty one. Then during some uh, running, I change a little bit uh, something in a file. I add this um, validation images. So uh, and then I exported these two files on my computer back from a server and I can load. Now let's look, for example, what is inside of find tuning example two. Uh, sorry, like find tuning example two, the name is such one. It should be mat file. 
So, whose you see here are some variables. Um, uh, actually, it's all variables that is here, but after I, I change something in my file and really real variables in, in this is in, in that file, file tuning example 21. And here you see more variables. Here you can see this image data store, for example, it's here. Uh, this validation images, etc., etc. All variables, it's here. Yeah, but I'm interested in this training network, FlowerNet. So, uh, but really, I will use this one with smaller amount of variables. Uh, but okay, what I can do with FlowerNet? Uh, I, I I will uh, no. It's just a, a little bit uh, strained network. It's a little bit strange name from other example. Okay, I will maybe uh, save it like a net, and I want to classify net classify, and I will feed here images from image data store. But now I will get an error because this data store is a data store from server and my local computer can't uh, cannot access to them then then i i will try to take these images locally so and that file is here that file is here no, yeah, maybe this will be the last uh, last file that we will take, yeah, because the time looks that is over really. So uh, then I will add uh, the directory with uh, the image sets, yeah. But it's it's this difficult is is because now I'm I'm my, my, on my local computer. I will try to take image data store with tested image, and I want to resize these images. Um, so, uh, then I, okay, no, here are two loading functions. No, this is the network, the network that I put on server. And this is a result that I get from server. Then I, um, and, um, what I can, what I can do, ah, like real class, no. Again, these images, I will run again these images, and then I uh, want to extract labels. What is labels? Uh, this labels comes from like a which is each e each image is label uh, labeled like um like a, no, you can look here is a berry, for example, is one class, it's a berry, yeah, it's a bird, it's another class, so that each that images will have a label bird for example each that images will have the um, label dog etc it that that is a label so and i will real uh, i will read these labels like uh, this real labels and then i will load load that one and i will ask no this flow um I will ask to classify. Classify. Here is a loading of. Uh, again, I have to load it, and uh, here is a classifying. We did it at the beginning of that lecture. Yeah. Classify. Mm -hmm. So it's classified, and uh, how to see the result? First of all, we can use this confusion chart. Confusion chart. No, let's try. Uh, yeah. Ah, it's here. You can see here are the true classes. Here are the predicted classes. Like a, and here we see some mismatches. Like a, uh, how much berry? Like a, um, for example, one berry is taking. Uh, it's understandable. Uh, is predicted as a bird two berries is predicted as a flower and five berry is predicted as other class etc 
uh, this is the one way how to show this confusion no like a how to see uh, that result another is just a computed computation uh, comes like uh, like a well, maybe I will show the real class is variable no I, I I can show some three labels here is like a uh, categorical array that uh, no here is really a lot of images how much uh, here in, in, um, a lot of images 2000 images and they um, the true categories and uh, I I would ask that real class will equal to predicted class predicted class also is a categorical array of predicted categories and if they match uh, this will be a logical one if don't match this will be logical zero here I can I can no I can sum or I can use non uh, number of non zero elements such function and calculate how much is real classes you no know, like a uh, 1928 is the real classes and 2000 is um, no like a this is how to say right prediction from such count then I will also divide this by no by by no normal or size of or, or length of real class no normal is like a size but if if it has a, like a number of row or number of column is a multiplication of a number of row or number of columns actually just a uh, number of elements and yeah here we have that result uh, nine and 97% it's okay uh but yeah it's uh again <laughs> what I did I I use this um like a transferred learning this transferred learning for each I have no here as validation accuracy uh 94 percent I can do the same with that one and uh and then maybe this result will be not so not so brilliant as, as that one uh okay um okay uh then maybe I I want to show uh, the la last thing how to look on wrong classes uh, here we got here we got 96 percent of success uh so we can look for example a real class uh not equal for example to prediction to predicted class we can look uh for wrong images yeah like uh, this will be index of wrong images index no indexes of wrong images um so I think no <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah uh, if I do some wrong matlabs uh is so convenient to change yeah like uh, here is some mismatching in C language we use this explanation mark in matlab we use this tilde okay then <laughs> matlab change it okay uh okay and here is the indexes of wrong images and I want to find any wrong images I want to look for that wrong images indexes for example here is a list for example image um, um 39 is wrong uh okay maybe then I can try to I can try to get this image tag to do that I have to have this uh test data store test data store gain then here is validation 
example. Where is the validation example? Just a second. Так. Find during validation. Here is validation example. So, and uh, I, uh, here is an image data store with tested image. Uh, так. I have to run it again. Yeah. Uh, read image MDS and the first wrong image was this one. Well, let's look what is here. Wow. Okay. And I can try to classify I can try to classify what is that one. Uh flower net classify. Uh so took that image and I want to run this, this command, but here I will provide this image. Mm. But then to provide it, I have to save it. So this is him. I saved this with a variable in. And I want to classify that, for example, like that one. Okay. Let's run it. Так. Uh, it's in correct size. Okay. So in size. Um, Так, image on two to seven, two to seven. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then predicted class is ah, uh, it's it's a uh, get like a, it's other yeah. And but we can also look on score uh, on second argument. Uh, yes, uh, second argument, and I can also, uh, I can also, um, uh, can see here, uh, is that classes, yeah, and, um, uh, and the fifth classes is other one, yeah, and, um, for some first classes berry that we can see that the neural network think that maybe is a berry with a five percentage is a berry it's not a bird exactly it's not a dog it's not a flower but with 95 first percent um it's uh, assume that it's something can another one yeah like a feature just a second image in my antarka. Like a, yeah, it's it's don't assume that this is a berry that we can uh get such a diagram for each uh for each uh, for each uh, like a uh, image. This point we can also annotate these classes you see it's not uh with one two three it's not uh very useful uh, then maybe we will get uh category names from neural network uh layers from the la uh, the last layer contains uh contains uh name of classes see here is name of classes and we can put them on uh, um, as an um, annotation to this bar x tick labels Category 
names. Yeah, and then you, we, you will see this example. Um, it's like more illustrated. So I suppose it's all from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, this thank you very fun. much. So I think that was a very nice hands-on even example exercise of using MATLAB. So very well done. Good insights, interesting pictures, and the power of AI.